comes a time when we heed a certain call when the it was some 20 years in the making, and the final production has awoken the world to a host of information, revealing the facts behind anecdotal beliefs. It's the United Nations Development Program, UNDP's Human Development Report 2013, The Rise of the South, Human Progress in a Diverse World. To quote the New York Times on the 20th anniversary of the HDR in 2010, it said, so far, only one measure has succeeded in challenging the hegemony of growth-centric thinking. This is known as the Human Development Index. On March 14, 2013, the global community was introduced to the UNDP's latest offerings on the Human Development Index. As would be later revealed at the June 4 Jamaica launch in Kingston, it provides critical development information for 187 countries and United Nations recognized territories. What is revealed is that economic growth by itself will not translate into human development progress. Pro-poor policies and significant investment in human capacities, such as in education, nutrition, health and employment skills, can expand access to decent work and provide for sustained progress. In highlighting innovative social programs as a hallmark of successful states, the HDR upholds the broader social and poverty reduction agenda of the South, which embraces policies to address inequalities, institutional failures, social barriers and personal vulnerabilities as being central to promoting economic growth. This key message of the report is excellently illustrated by the initiative taken by the New York City Mayor Michael Bloomberg who traveled to Mexico to study that Spanish-speaking country's Oportunidades program prior to launching Opportunity NYC Family Rewards, the first conditional cash program in the United States. The UNDP flagship publication reinforces this message by highlighting 42 countries that are putting the principle into action. These countries represent the rise of the South, so designated for reasons not related to geographical positions. The southern countries were always, it was broadened to include all countries that were not developed, less developed, least developed. It does not directly relate only to northern and southern hemisphere, but it was more on the level of their economic development, their overall sustainable development. And by all indicators, all countries of the South accelerated their achievements in education, health and income dimensions over the last decade. Larger countries like Brazil, Thailand, China, India, Indonesia, Mexico, South Africa and Turkey have made rapid advances. In fact, by 2020, the combined economic output of the emerging markets of China, India and Brazil is projected to surpass the aggregate production of the United States of America, the United Kingdom, Canada, France, Germany and Italy. Significant progress has also been achieved by smaller economies, such as Bangladesh, Chile, Ghana, Mauritius, Rwanda and Tunisia. With a focus on education, health and capacity building, states can expand access to decent work and sustain progress. Between 1990 and 2013, the average life expectancy in Latin America and the Caribbean rose from 68.2 to 74.7 .7 years which means that today we live six years and a half more than 20 years ago. Jamaica is among those Caribbean countries rising to the challenge of sustainable human development. Jamaica is without a doubt part of the rising south. Between 1980 and 2012, Jamaica's GNI per capita increased by about 43%. Life expectancy at birth increased by 2.8 years mean years of schooling by 4.4 years and expected years of schooling by two years. Classified by the UNDP as an upper middle income country, Jamaica was ranked 85 out of 187 countries on the Human Development Index HDI for 2012. That represents positive movement in the country's HDI value from 0.612 in 1980 to 0.730 in 2012. It's the result, says the UNDP report, of the Jamaican government's commitment to improving access to health and education while addressing people's financial concerns. But we dare not be satisfied. There is much work to be done. We must continue to build on the advances that we have made and embark on a growth agenda characterized by investments in infrastructure, agriculture, 
transportation and other key sectors of the economy. The launch of the 2013 HDR Rise of the South in Jamaica has provided an excellent platform for the Jamaican government to engage with its southern partners. This now presents an opportunity to solicit the commitment and support of Jamaica's southern partners to strengthen national macroeconomic stability. The challenge for Jamaica now is for Jamaica, and we're not just talking about the government of Jamaica, the, the government with the private sector to identify what are the opportunities what are the new things that we can export to these new poles of economic growth? Already the world has seen the benefits of South-South partnerships in areas such as technology transfer, trade, investment and development financing. There is a renewed optimism underscored in the report that the major advancements in the South can be broadened through increased partnerships. I, I couldn't agree more. If you look at the collaboration that we're talking about, uh, the IPSA, India, Brazil, South Africa, it has led to where we are today. You look at BRICS, uh, which is again Brazil, Russia, India, China, South Africa, is another collaboration that is beginning to bear fruit, particularly for South Africa. The 2013 Human Development Report, the rise of the South, human progress in a diverse world, a lesson in the power of cooperation, confirmation that dual focus on social and economic concerns is the best bet for sustainable human development. The report is good. I thought um, it brought out what the reality of what is happening and it was about time. Yeah.